My name is Mr. Emil Biade, and welcome to General Physics 1. Today's topic is about motion graphs. The next graph is the velocity and time graph. Similar to the displacement versus time graph, we just replace the displacement with velocity in the y-axis. Let's use a graph where an object travels 3 seconds. So the set of values covers the time interval from 0 to 3 seconds. Since the velocity is the y-axis, our slope will represent a different quantity. Rise over run is velocity over time, and by analyzing the units, acceleration is our slope for the velocity and time graph. And we add another quantity that we can interpret for the velocity and time graph. This is only for velocity and time graph that we have two quantities. Aside from the slope, we will also have the area under the curve. The area will be tricky since the equation for the area will always vary on the shape. What we have here is a triangle. So the equation will be 1 half base times height. But if we see a different shape, like later on, the equation will not be the same. If we are computing the area, by just looking into the units, it will result in displacement. Now let's try and solve for acceleration. Rise over run gives us that acceleration is equal to we see that the graph gives us a constant increase in velocity because of the diagonal straight line. For the displacement, we observe a triangle under the graph, so we will use the equation 1 half base times height, which gives us a total of 2 meters. Let's have an example wherein an object moves with non-uniform acceleration. As you can see from the velocity, its increase is not the same for each time interval, which makes the acceleration non-uniform. Plotting this in the graph, we see a curved line. The curved line will always indicate a non-uniform increase if it's headed upward and a non-uniform decrease if it's headed downward. So for this case, it's upward, it's an increase. Let's have an example and solve for acceleration after 3 seconds. So we consider only points 0 and 3 seconds. Acceleration represents the slope. The rise is between 0 to 18 meters per second. To be precise with the slope or acceleration, we can consider the rise as a difference between points. R final minus initial. The 18 meters per second minus 0. And the run as a time interval which is simply 3 seconds. Which gives us an acceleration of 6 meters per second squared. Let's try another example. However, let's change the graph by adding two more points. Extending our graph from 5 seconds to 7 seconds. Let's solve the acceleration from time 5 seconds to 7 seconds. Can you see the slope? Yes, the slope is headed downward. In writing the rise or descent, in our equation as 30 meters per second minus 50 meters per second will give us a negative answer since the slope is headed downward. And for the run, we are not concerned about the entire time interval but only for the slope which only covers 2 seconds. This will result with an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared. 
Now for the area under the curve, the displacement. This will lead us to two shapes. The first one is a triangle with the equation 1 half base times height. By looking at the graph and substituting the values, we have the base at 2 seconds and the height for this triangle to be 20 meters per second. We arrive with the final answer of 20 meters for D1. We have D1 because we have two shapes under this curve. I hope you see the second, which is a rectangle. Remember, when we say area under the curve, this means from the slope towards zero. The second displacement is a rectangle with a different equation of length times width with a length of 30 meters per second and a width of 2 seconds which equals to 60 meters for our D2. Adding the two displacements gives us the area under the curve and finally the displacement for the time interval 5 seconds to 7 seconds which is 80 meters. This means the object's displacement was 80 meters during this 2 second time interval. Displacement can be negative just like our example. Can you find the total displacement traveled by the object after moving 10 seconds? We need to take this step by step based on the movement of our graph. So first, the upward incline gives us a triangle, so substitute we get the displacement 1 meters. For our next shape, the rectangle with length times width yields 4 meters, followed by a descent which equals to a positive 1 meters. Even though it was a descent, the answer is positive since based on our formula for velocity, we just multiply the 1 half to its base which is positive 1 second to the height, which is positive 2 meters per second. This gives us a positive answer. Now for some negative answers. Since we headed downward past zero, the velocity turns negative. We see a triangle, which gives us negative 4 meters. Since based on the formula, we just multiply the one half to its base which is 2 seconds to the height which is negative 4 meters per second this gives us a negative answer lastly the rectangle measures to be negative 16 meters since we multiplied negative 4 meters per second to 4 seconds the total displacement after 10 seconds is just the sum of all displacements, which is equal to negative 14 meters. If we analyze the velocity and acceleration from the graph, we need again to take this step by step based on the movement of our graph. The object initially moved with an increasing positive velocity at constant positive acceleration. Next. The velocity is constant since we see a horizontal line. This means the acceleration is zero, followed by a slope downward until we reach zero. This indicates a negative constant acceleration as the velocity reaches zero. This means the object is slowing down until it comes to a stop. Continuing downward, shows that the object is moving in the opposite direction after reaching zero. This indicates a negative slope or a negative constant acceleration. Lastly, the object moves at a constant negative velocity and since the velocity doesn't change, the acceleration is zero. The third and last motion graph is the acceleration versus time graph. Now, unlike the velocity and time graph, this one has only one quantity to analyze. And unlike the displacement versus time or velocity versus time graph, this won't compute for the slope. 
we will only solve for the area under the curve. The area will solve for velocity, which will mean the equation will vary according to shape, if it's a triangle, or a rectangle, or even a triangle again. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Goodbye!